This is a podcast from the OrthoCycle Foundation. We're going to look at the postural lateral approach to the ankle. The postural lateral approach to the ankle joint is useful if you want to put a plate on the posterior malleolus and you can also simultaneously plate the fibula through the same approach. You can perform this procedure in the prone position but it will be more popular with your anaesthetist if you put them into a lateral position. I give my patients the popliteal block and I always ensure that they've had a preoperative CT scan. The approach uh, involves going through two fascial planes. The first one um, will expose the perineal tendons so then you need to retract the perineals anteriorly and you'll see a second fascial plane over the FHL. If you divide this you'll be able, be able to find a gap between the perineals and the FHL distally. Watch out for the cerebral nerve. I like to operate in the lateral position. The non-affected leg is bent 90 degrees so that I can get a decent image intensifier picture uh, of the uh, fractured ankle. First of all, I'm going to mark on the surface anatomy. There's the edge of the fibula and then the lateral edge of the Achilles tendon. Now, there has been a denim pin put through the calcaneus as part of an A-frame external fixator. And this has left a hole uh, after we've removed the external fixator, so we're going to cover this up with some uh, iodine. The denim pin was placed a little bit more superiorly than I would normally place it. I want it to be a little bit more inferior uh, on the uh, calcaneus because where we are drawing now, halfway between the fibula and the Achilles tendon, is awfully close to where that um, uh, hole is. I'd want it to be over the tuberosity posterior to the axis of the ankle joint. We're going to go ahead and make an incision. And this is actually directly overlying where we think the sural nerve is. And once we've got through the skin, we're going to get rid of that scalpel and use Mackindo's dissecting scissors so that we can bloodly dissect and find the sural nerve and protect this. I'm looking posteriorly on the skin edge and it's not there so I'm going to look a little bit more um, anteriorly and there I found a vessel and the nerve. In a minute we'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly. There's the nerve. There's a small vessel just in front of it. So it's important to mobilise the serial nerve so that we can retract it, get it out of the way, and then it can be protected by a self retaining retractor. So a little bit more dissection is required anteriorly so that we can mobilise the serial nerve posteriorly. Sometimes it can be a little bit awkward because one branch of the cerebral nerve will arc just underneath the fibula so it's quite anterior and you've got to be careful to make sure that this isn't damaged during the dissection. We can now see a little bit of the fascia which is underlying this. Because we can see that fascia, we can use the self-retaining retractor to 
expose the fascia much more fully. So there are two layers of fascia as we've described before. The first layer of fascia is overlying the perineal tendon. Here it is. And we're going to divide that using a scalpel. This exposes the perineal muscle. And we can retract this anteriorly. And this in itself will expose the second layer of fascia that you need to incise. That layer of fascia you can expose more by using the self retainer to push the perineals forwards. And now we've got the layer of fascia which is overlying the flexor hallucis longus. So there's the perineal tendon, the fascia uh, over the FHL, and we can now incise this. Now this fascia arises partly from the uh, fibula, and the muscle FHL arises from the fibula. But at the inferior margin, there is a defect, and it's possible to palpate the posterior malleolus through this. So with my finger, I can now feel the posterior malleolus. Now, what we'd like to do is to uh, protect the vessel which lies on the posterior uh, aspect of the introsteous membrane. And if we put a finger up behind the fibula, we can then protect that vessel and use a knife to release the FHL from the fibula itself. This could also be done with some dissecting scissors, or whatever takes your preference. So just peel that off the fibula, and this will then give us the opportunity to put the self-retaining retractor in between the FHL and the perineals, and this will then expose the uh, posterior aspect of the tibia and the posterior malleolus. So using my finger I can feel the posterior aspect of the, the uh, tibia and hopefully when we move the self-retaining retractor we'll be able to see that interval nicely and that's the back of the tibia it's a little bit dark there's also a vessel in there which is the perineal artery this lies on the interosteous membrane on this posterior aspect and it gives off a branch which penetrates the interosteous membrane uh, and then goes anteriorly. This image is a little bit dark but hopefully we'll be able to see the vessel. And this needs to be protected. So there's the perineals, the FHL, and with the finger in between, palpates the posterior malleolus. And I'm tapping it there, that's the posterior malleolus. It's got a little bit of blood on it, but 
that is quite recognisable as bone and you can palpate it. And if we look under here, we can find the serial nerve which is protected uh, posteriorly. There's the perineals and FHL again. And there's the posterior perineolus. And that's taken about five minutes to do. This is another patient with a postural approach. We can see the FHL being retracted posteriorly. At the top of the wound, we can see the uh, shaft of the tibia, which has been denuded. There's actually a large vein running across this uh, specimen, which is going to have to be divided. And the posterior malleus, we're going to leave the periosteum intact uh, so as not to devitalize this and because it's commuted underneath. The vein has been now divided. There's the FHL posteriorly the perineals anteriorly. We can see the plate which has been attached to the back uh, surface of the tibia. And this is going to be acting as a buttress to push the posterior malleolar fragment inferiorly and anteriorly and line up with the rest of the joint. Here we can see the perineal tendon, the FHL, and if we split the two we can see the plate that we've applied to the posterior aspect of the tibia. If we move the perineal tendon posteriorly, you can see the plate that we've applied to the posterior aspect of the fibula. Here's a postoperative x ray demonstrating a trimalleolar fracture with a T plate on the back of the tibia, which is acting as a buttress on the posterior malleolus, and a posteriorly plated fibula, which is biomechanically stronger than a lateral plate. I tend now to not use a T plate on the back, just using a straight plate, but again acting as a buttress. If you're interested in the work of Orthocycle, you can visit our website at www.orthocycle.org.